Hi all, I have another amazing attacking game to show you. Stockfish 9, some of you have been asking, you know, to, to show Stockfish 9 against Leela ID 11247. So a very high Leela ID. Uh, so Leela was on a 1080 Ti graphics card. Stockfish 9 dev, 4 cores on an i7 3930. Uh, so this is uh, Lewis in the Leela forum says, please take a look at this amazing game. Serious Games posted yesterday by Gallagher in the thread, Leela is ready to be number one in the world. So the other games are also pretty interesting in this match. But let's have a look at this one. D4 from Stockfish 9. We have Knight F6, C4. This is the book. It's actually the old Indian. So Bishop E7, old Indian main line. So the king's engine is with the bishop fianchettoing. Now this is the end of the book. So bishop e2 is Stockfish 9's first move. Leela castles. She wants uh, white to really close the center, I believe. If white ever takes anyway, this bishop's activated. So white just castles. They're both ignoring this central tension for the moment. Rook e8. And now d5 committing to closing the center. a5, making sure that a knight c5 could be handy hitting e4 without being nudged h3 knight c5 white protects that pawn g6 as though there is scope for rerouting the bishop later uh, knight h2 h5 knight f3 b6 bishop h6 knight h7 bishop goes back we have rook f8 preparing it seems for the classic king's engine recipe you know f5 to expand on the king side a3 and now a magnificent move which i believe we've seen this concept in a, a topical magnus colson game i think it might have been even against caruana this concept here uh, a similar principle a4 it's a pawn sacrifice one can actually forcibly win a pawn i think it was a caruana against um uh, our world champion Magnus Carlsen with black. So here uh, Stockfish line immediately seizes the opportunity to execute this pawn. Will there be a revenge for that uh, pawn being exterminated? Black has the dark square bishop without the counterpart so positional long-term compensation in this position. The pawn is very far away from queening. It's a long time to queen at the moment it's already just blocked anyway that knight would have to get out of the way black is able to get on with a king side attack off the f5 and stall a pawn on f4 making advances rook f7 rook fb1 knight f6 knight f3 knight h7 and now the pushes to squish on the king side g5 it looks beautiful harmonious attacking play which we've come to expect from Leela. Knight h2 and now g4 after hg the intention is actually bishop f8 to put pressure down the g-file. If h takes g4 I believe this simplifies too much after bishop takes. White will have a nice advantage here and has scope for evacuating the king. Leela wants to play this in such a way to put pressure on the g-file without the king necessary, necessarily evacuating g takes h5 greedy taking on the pawn let's have a look if b4 not so greedy rook g7 say this this scenario it's uh it's an interesting scenario if black ever takes because the third rank is cleared which means rook a6 to a uh, coming over here i'll give you some examples well that closes the third rank though but this uh example is good because of the knight coming into d4 this is good for black very good for black potentially with the knight coming to d4 so that's a very very nice scenario indeed black getting an advantage there uh, so uh, g takes h5 was played in this line uh, let's go back to the game though. <laughs> so bishop f8, uh, we have g takes h5 in the game. So rook g7. 
Uh, now we have bishop g4 here. And now we have queen h4. White takes on c8. Rook takes knight f3. Queen h3, knight e1. So this pressure does mean something. White's kind of tied down. And something really remarkable happens here, which is is stunning in conception. Black to play, what would you play in this position? If I give you five seconds to pause the video. Okay. It's not the move actually as such as, as the follow up, which is stunning. You might think sacrificing the rook is stunning. Okay, what has to take? But you might think the follow up's just f3 with the form pawn, which we know is a fantastic, iconic Leela trademark. Uh, but actually, f3 kind of may, may lose here, unfortunately, in this particular position, because it does weaken that e3 square. And there's other opportunities as well emerging here for white. I'll give you an example here. Check. Black can just get the perpetual, but if Black uh, tried uh, to do something else, uh, say here, after the check here, um, White is actually threatening to play Knight e2 potentially and then Knight g3. This is the problem. Yeah, this this is dangerous. So uh yeah, black's gotta be careful with knight e two and counter sacking, that's that's gonna be great for white potentially. Uh so there is there is some issues with creating the form pawn immediately. So in fact Leela takes her time after this rook sack, just knight g five. We have knight e one. And now bishop h6. Things are brewing here, definitely. And it seems as though white's just waiting for an execution here. Uh, knight e2. And you'll note that the pawn on f4 is handy because it you know, discourages knight g3. We have queen h4. On king h8, uh, this position with queen d3, it seems as though this might be a uh, nice for white. For example, f3 again, there's knight g3, and the knight's holding g2. White might have an advantage there. So actually, black has to play extremely precisely. Queen h4, queen d3 now, slightly different. Uh, we have now rook f3, now king f1, and it's only here that the form pawn is, is installed. f3, knight g3, queen h2, and it looks as though uh, it's just going to be a perpetual check, right? There's nothing apart from a perpetual check. Uh, so queen h4 threatens knight h3 winning the queen here. So white steps back, just maybe it's like perpetual check time. Just to put this on the board, if b4, knight h3 check, and then taking on e3 has to be avoided. So white is limited in scope. For what what can be done? So check queen g4, and here actually the white queen gets out of the way with queen d3, which seems pretty sensible. And you might think, well, what what is king f1 actually more accurate? Uh, it seems black might actually be okay here with rook f4 hitting e4. This might be a second idea in the position to try and grab this center pawn. And that's going to be really dangerous. This this kind of thing is going to be really dangerous. So yeah, white um, play queen d3 though. And we have check. And the issue here is this bishop. Do you remember this pawn sack earlier on? hasn't got a counterpart, which makes white in theory, just on a theoretical basis, weaker on dark squares. And there's a particular dark square unit here, G3 and F2, which would be great to add more pressure to. I wonder if you can find the key move here using this dark square bishop. 
If I give you three seconds to pause the video. Okay. Bishop g5, yes. It's the bishop's gonna come and put pressure on this diagonal. Rook c1 and bang, knight takes f2. Yeah, carnage on the dark squares. Vengeance for losing the eighth pawn has been uh, obtained, it seems, already. This looks grim. Knight takes, queen takes g3 check. And this is uh, the hoover has been brought out for white's pieces. <laughs> uh, actually, white resigned here. Rook takes f3 could be a continuation. For example, queen g4, queen takes e4, dragging the king back for the execution. Queen d3, checkmate, could be a final beautiful finish. White does have that outside pass pawn, <laughs> but it didn't quite even step to a4. So <laughs> in this fictional continuation. So uh, yeah, it seems as though Leela's literally used a concept I've seen in a high level Magnus Carlsen game recently. I'm pretty sure if I can find that video link, I'll put it in the pinned comment of this video. This is really beautiful attacking chess. I think we can all learn from. I think from beginners to super grandmasters can check out these games. I think get something interesting to think about. Comments, questions, like, shares appreciated. Thanks so much.